Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and today I want to talk about how to set up Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, also known as the Elk Stack, on Windows Server 2012 R2. I kind of feel like this is going to be a lengthy video, so I'm going to do my best to keep this as short as possible. I'll also put a uh, link to the, my blog post on this video down below, and you can go there to find the uh, configuration files, any of the commands that I use in the video, so you can easily copy and paste them. Uh, links to the downloads, as well as more information on this topic. And uh, like I said, I'll put a link to that in the comment section down below. So the first piece of software that we'll need to install on the server is going to be Java, and that's required for the Elasticsearch service. Uh, so then if you browse over to Elastic.co in their download section, go ahead and download the Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, as well as the Beats agents, and we're going to use those to get data into our Elk stack. And then uh, next up, we're going to need WinPCAP, and that's going to be used for the Packet Beat agent to gather information about the network and all the connections that we're seeing. And then lastly, we'll be using NSSM, which is the non-sucking service manager, and we'll be using that to install Logstash and Kibana as services on Windows. So go ahead and download all those files, and then I would recommend uncompressing them into a common directory, where you'll see, like, here I have them uncompressed to C, Elkstack, and then there's a folder with the application for each application. So I have, like, Elkstack, Elasticsearch, FileBeat, and whatever. Um, but it makes it easy for when you install because you need to know the exact path because there's a lot of command lines that are used for the uh, the installs here. And then uh, to make this easy for the video, instead of actually typing out the commands, I wrote a little script. But really it's just copy and paste of the uh, commands that I'll be using, which is uh, exactly what you would use to install them too. And I kind of commented it out just to make it easy and visual for the uh, install process in the video. Again, you will be able to get all these commands from the blog post on my website, which can be found in the comments down below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the install. So the first thing we're going to need to install is going to be Java. And I've got the uh, Java JDK 8 Update 92 64-bit edition. I'm just going to go ahead and double-click that to launch the installer and uh, give it a second here. And I'm going to click Run because, yes, we trust this file. All right, so now that the installer is finally launching, um, the one thing we need to note here is gonna be where we're installing Java 2. Um, so notice that install to directory, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that change button there and then use control C to copy that. And then we'll use that path later on to create a system variable named Java home, which is gonna be used by the Elastic Search engine. So since the Java install is gonna take a second, let's just go ahead and create that system variable now. So uh, since this is server 2012, it's gonna go to the top right corner and then I'll go to settings and let's go to server info and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the advanced system settings alright so next we're going to click on environment variables and click the new button and then for the variable name we're going to do java underscore home and then for the variable value we're going to paste that value that we copied from the path from the java install and then go ahead and click ok and click ok again and click OK again and then let's go ahead and close out of the system properties now it's important to note here that uh, PowerShell is needed for the install of Elasticsearch and if you open PowerShell before you create the system variable the Java home one it won't pick it up so you need to if you did open PowerShell beforehand you need to close it and reopen it after you've created the variable and then you should be able to proceed alright so let's just wait for the uh, Java install to wrap up and then we'll go ahead and proceed with installing the Elasticsearch Okay, so now that the Java install is complete, let's go ahead and close that out. And let's go back to the script that I wrote in the, uh, the C elk stack directory that I have where I uncompressed all my files at. And um, so basically, like I said, this is just a copy and paste of the commands that you would use to run to uh, install these. And I put a few comments in there that prerequisites of like installing the Java JDK, uh, creating that system variable Java home, and downloading and unzipping all the packages into a common directory like I've done here to the C elk stack directory. And uh, once you've done those, you can go ahead and run through this script. And I also put this on my blog post too. Um, but like I said, it's just a few commands. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be doing this from PowerShell. Um, but basically, I'm just going to go to the directory of the uh, Elasticsearch install, the bin, and then I'm going to type service space install. All right, so let's go ahead and open PowerShell, and then we'll pull up our directory, and let's go ahead and drag and drop that script. 
and then uh, going back to the script like I said I'm just gonna be um, basically going to the directory of the elastic search and the bin directory and then typing service space install and uh, it would be exactly the same as you would type it at a command prompt but in this case I have to do the invoke expression dash command since it's PowerShell um, but let's go ahead and hit enter and run that in PowerShell and you see that it successfully installs the service and uh, like I said, all I basically did was go to the directory and type service space install and it goes ahead and then successfully installs the service. So let's go ahead and hit press any key to continue because I put that little pause in there. And uh, But then after that, it's going to go ahead and launch our service space manager in the same Elasticsearch bin directory. And this is where we'll set the properties for the, the Elasticsearch service. So let's go ahead and set up the uh, startup type to auto and let's go ahead and start the service now and give it a second for that service to start. While it's doing that, it's also worth noting on the Java tab here, you can uh, increase the memory maximum memory pool for this service. And uh, as you start to index more, you'll probably want to increase that. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and hit apply and then OK. And uh, we've successfully installed the Elasticsearch service. All right, so uh, now that we've installed Elasticsearch, we need to verify that it's actually running. And uh, we can do this with PowerShell using the command invoke web request to the uh, local loopback IP, which would be 127.0.0.1 on the port 9200. And we see that it returns a 200 OK, along with some other information. Uh, but we can also verify that it's running by just browsing to the site. Uh, and we can do that using the command start Chrome using the Chrome web browser to the uh, same loopback IP address on that same port 9200. Let's go ahead and launch that now. And we see it returns, it says the name is Onyx, the cluster name is Elasticsearch, and we see the tagline, you know, for search. So uh, we can verify that this Elasticsearch service is actually up and running and it's ready for use. So just to recap what I did there was, I basically downloaded and uncompressed the Elasticsearch package and then used the uh, service space install command and then service space manager commands against the Elasticsearch bin directory to install and configure it. And that's all it took, two commands. So the next thing we need to do here is go ahead and install and configure Logstash. So you can use the following PowerShell command to download the uh, logstash.json configuration file. And you'll want to install that to your local Logstash slash bin directory. So once we have the configuration file downloaded, we can then use the non-sucking service manager with the following PowerShell uh, command, invoke expression command, and basically point to the directory nssm space install space logstash to install the logstash service. So like I said, just make sure you download that logstash.json configuration file to your logslash slash bin directory because that's the file that's going to tell Logstash where to listen to for inputs and where to output them to to the Elastic Search Engine. All right, so uh, now that we've downloaded that configuration file, we can go ahead and use the uh, non-sucking service manager to install the uh, Logstash service. So you'll notice on the right-hand side, I've output some uh, in basic information that I'll need to use to uh, configure the Logstash service. And for the path, I'm just going to use the uh, Logstash slash bin slash Logstash dot bat and that's going to be my uh, main file there. And then for the startup directory, I'm just going to point it to the logstash slash bin directory. And then for the arguments, I'm going to use that to point it to the uh, logstash.json configuration file that we just downloaded using PowerShell. And uh, that will use it as its uh, startup configuration file. And then for the details, I'm basically just going to set the uh, display name, the description, and the uh, make sure that the startup type is automatic. So the last settings we need to configure here are going to be the dependencies. And um, basically all we're going to do is say is if the Elastic Search service is not running, don't start the uh, Logstash service. And that'll just help us out when uh, troubleshooting why things aren't working. And uh, that's basically all there is to it. So let's just go ahead and review the settings, make sure we're pointing to all the correct paths, review our details here, the dependencies, and then go ahead and click install the service. And then go ahead and click OK to complete the install, and that's it. Uh, Logstash is, is successfully installed as a service. So let's go ahead and move on to the Kibana install. And uh, it's basically going to be exactly the same thing. We're going to use the uh, command nssm space install space Kibana to install the uh, Kibana service. And then uh, we'll go ahead and use that to launch the installer and go ahead and configure it. And uh, I did the exact same thing. On the right-hand side, I output the uh, path that we need to use, which is basically going to point to the uh, kibana slash bin slash kibana dot bat. And the startup directory is just going to be the uh, elk stack slash kibana slash bin directory. And we'll go ahead and enter that. 
And the, uh, on the details tab, we're going to use Kibana. And then for the description, we'll use Kibana service and make sure the startup type is automatic. And then for the dependencies, I'll configure it similarly to how we configure the Logstash one, where um, we'll set the service to require the Elasticsearch service to be running, as well as the Logstash service, again, to prevent troubleshooting against service failures and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, that's basically it. Go ahead and review the settings, you know, your application tab, your details tab, your dependencies tab, and then uh, go ahead and click the install service button, and then click OK to uh, continue. Alright, so now that we've installed the services, let's make sure that they're actually running. And now we can do this by running this services.msc command, and that will launch the uh, Microsoft Services Console. So let's go ahead and press any key to continue, and it launches that console. And the first service we'll check will be the uh, Elasticsearch service, and we see that it is actually running and set to automatic. And uh, so the next thing we'll check will be the Logstash service, and uh, let's go ahead and start that now. Uh, but it is set to automatic, so it should start with the server. And then next up will be the uh, Kibana service. And let's go ahead and start that now as well. And uh, But we do see that it is also set to automatic, so it should start with the server from now on. Alright, so uh, now that we've installed, configured, and successfully started all of our services, let's go ahead and uh, start the uh, Kibana web interface and verify that it actually loads. And we can do that by browsing to a uh, local host or the uh, local loopback IP address, or if you're on the LAN, even the local LAN IP address, and specify the port 5601. So in this case, we'll use localhost colon 5601, and we see that it loads the Kibana interface, but we have no uh, index patterns configured at this point. And we won't actually be able to in, uh, until we start sending data into the ELK stack. So uh, let's go ahead and configure some of the Beats agents now so we can get some data flowing into our ELK stack. Now, installing the Beats agents is pretty straightforward. You'll basically download each one of the packages, extract it, and there'll be an install PowerShell script within each one of the directories. Uh, the only thing to really note here is that the packetbeat one does require WinPCAP to be installed before you're able to start the service. So if you try to start it and it fails, make sure that the uh, WinPCAP is actually installed. The other thing is, when you deploy these Beats agents on remote systems, you'll want to make sure that you edit the uh, YML or YAML configuration files and point them back to your Logstash server, that way it can index the logs from those servers. Also, since the installs are PowerShell based, you want to make sure that you're on the lookout for issues with the uh, PowerShell execution policy, especially if you're looking to automate these installs on the remote systems. Other than that, let's just uh, continue on to uh, run through these PowerShell scripts here, and I'll just hit uh, press any key to continue to install the uh, WinPCAP, and uh, I think it hung here. I think it's because I put it in the quotes. So let's just go ahead and uh, launch that manually. I'll pull up the uh, file explorer here, and let's go ahead and launch the WinPCAP installer manually. I'm going to go ahead and run that. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, next, next finish through this. And we'll just finish up that install and then continue on with the uh, PowerShell script installs of the uh, Beats agents. And then we need to verify that the services are actually running on the server. So let's go ahead and open up services.msc. And the uh, first service that we'll look up will actually be our uh, packet beat service. So we'll type P. And let's go ahead and start that service since it's not started. And next up, we'll look for our WinLog service. And let's go ahead and start that service as well. And next up will be the uh, Top Beat service. And let's go ahead and start that one. And lastly, we'll have the uh, File Beat service. And we'll go ahead and start that as well. So now that we've got the Beats agents installed, configured, and started, we should now be able to configure index patterns on Kibana so that we can start searching and visualizing data in our Kibana instance. So I'm going to press any key to continue on my script here, and you'll notice that it gives us our last set of settings here. So it says to go into the Kibana instance and go to settings and indices, and let's go ahead and configure some index patterns. And basically, we're going to tie it to the agents dash wildcard. Now, the file beat one, it won't actually work until we point it to like a, a, a actual log text file. 
and uh, we haven't done that yet so in this case we're just going to go ahead and configure the uh, packet beat the top beat and the win log beat uh, but it's basically just going to be packet beat dash wildcard and then I'll go ahead and configure the index and then we'll add some additional ones which will be top beat dash wildcard along with win log beat dash wildcard and then I'll grab all of the uh, the logs from the uh, beats agents and go ahead and index them in our Kibana instance All right, so uh, now that we've got all of our index patterns set up for our uh, beats agents, let's go ahead and uh, head over to the uh, Discover tab in our Kibana interface and see what logs we can discover, because it should now be receiving data from our beats agents. And uh, we see right off the bat it defaults to the packet beat, and uh, but we do see that we have data flowing into our Elk stack. All right, so uh, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this video. Um, to this point, we've gone ahead and configured the uh, Elasticsearch service along with the uh, Logstash and Kibana services. And we've also configured the uh, Beat services as well. Uh, it's worth noting that the uh, Kibana service actually has a YML or YAML configuration file along with various settings in it that you can, that you can configure. And uh, if you plan on deploying the Beats agents on remote systems, you want to make sure that you edit their YML or YAML configuration files to uh, point back to the Logstash server that we've configured here. So that way you can gather those logs from the remote systems and index them into our Elk stack. So one more quick note before I uh, drop out here. I wanted to show how you could switch between the uh, various time frames using the uh, Kibana interface because it's super easy and uh, how to switch between the various uh, beat uh, sources as well. Uh, I feel like this gives you an amazing amount of insight into your environment and I hope you guys really enjoyed this one because I did and uh, thanks for watching.